surface water, you know, it's exposed to a lot of different elements. It's right at the surface, you know, as it's described. And it's just coming straight from the water sources. Sometimes you can have ducks and other, um, you know, organisms and animals coming in through there. Um, and so, I, I mean, that's probably the biggest risk um, from, my, from that perspective. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me on the podcast this week is Dr. Gabby Dawn. Dr. Dawn is a postdoctoral research associate at SMEC. Uh, Gabby, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, for those who maybe haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, uh, why don't you give them a brief introduction? Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much for, um, you know, having me on the podcast. Um, yep. Like you had mentioned, my name is Gabby Don and I'm a veterinarian and postdoc. Um, I, um, I graduated uh, vet school in 2021 from ISU and uh, now I'm working to get my master's and PhD. Um, I do a little bit of teaching and research and then also some clinical practice as well. Very good. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Gabby, um, you've uh, recently published some work on waterline sanitation and ultimately the biosecurity risk that exists from water coming into the farm. Um, you want to talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, what is the risk of, of water coming into the farm from a biosecurity standpoint? Why, why should producers be concerned about it? Yeah, so... I, I like to kind of begin. So we don't we have a lot of research on water as a nutritional component, but we don't have a lot of work uh, looking at are there any concerns, you know, are there any pathogens that could be coming into our farms um, or circulating in our farms, especially through our water sources. And so, you know, primarily there's a few different types of water sources that um, producers will have. So they'll have uh, private wells, um, they'll have surface water. Or occasionally, sometimes you can see some municipal um, water sources. And so I think really there's two main components that we, you know, maybe should be concerned about, you know, the source water itself, you know, does the water, you know, have pathogens coming into the water and then inside the water lines itself. So through biofilms um, and, and those areas. And so I kind of split it up into those two big parts. So let's start, um, Gabby, with what's coming into the farm. You mentioned um, surface water, you mentioned wells, and, and then, um, you know, uh, residential water sources, rural water, uh, town water, that sort of stuff. Um, I guess stack rank those, which, which represents the biggest biosecurity risk for producers? Yeah, so I think the primary one is surface water. Um, surface water, you know, it's exposed to a lot of different elements. It's right at the surface, you know, as it's described. And it's just coming straight from the water sources. Sometimes you can have ducks and other, um, you know, organisms and animals coming in through there. Um, and so, I, I mean, that's probably the biggest risk um, from my, from that perspective. Then, um, you know, we it's one, it once was thought that uh, uh, groundwater or water from private wells was relatively safe. However, in the research that I've looked at it, it's actually quite um, the opposite in some areas, depending on your geologic um, different components and those certain risk factors. And so um, there's been a lot of research on the human side uh, documenting, you know, that there's uh, human pathogens that are reaching even deep wells, like up to 300 meters deep and um, both with bacterial and viral pathogens. And so I think, you know, even though it hasn't really been explored on the swine side, we, we really need to, you know, be concerned about it. It. Municipal sources, we don't necessarily have to worry about because that's treated before it's coming into the lines. But I think, you know, at the farm and on the internal kind of source, once it's in the farm, we do need to worry about it um, just because the pigs can inoculate um, the inside of those farms and those water lines. And so pathogens can build up there. Do we understand, Gabby, with the well situation, how that contamination occurs? 
Um, is it the water is contaminated at the surface where it eventually starts to seep all the way down? Or is there some other route of contamination in there? Or we just don't know. Yeah. So, um, you know, there, there's general ideas, but and they have done some studies with microbial source tracking and things. But I think the biggest risk, especially for our farms, is um, newer spread and then a subsequent rainfall. Um, you know, in some of the human studies, that's when they notice that coliform counts like increase in the aquifer and, um, you know, they, they target, um, you know, testing the water for viral and bacterial pathogens after, you know, those events occur. And so um, really, it, it starts with contamination at the surface. And, you know, especially for pig production, if that's a mismanaged compost pile, manure spread, you know, um, any of those types of risk events, and then uh, subsequent rainfall that brings those, uh, you know, pathogens through what are called macro pores. And so depending on the soil type and uh, if you have fractured bedrock or other things like that, um, you know, that's how really it can get down, especially through uh, water recharge too. So groundwater right now, it's recharging. We're, you know, hopefully having a, a few more rain events this fall, but um, with that, our, our groundwater is recharging. And so a lot of the water is moving around and those pathogens or different contaminants can move, um, you know, even laterally, um, you know, to different locations in the span of that aquifer. So it sounds like the contamination may not necessarily be consistent and related to, you know, some specific event like applying manure. If a producer's got well water or surface water, <clears throat> what would you advise them from a diagnostic testing standpoint to determine if there's risk? Is it silly to do the testing just because it is going to be intermittent and a negative test result may not give us any confidence? Or is there some value in doing testing to determine if some water treatment is appropriate? So I'm I'm in the camp that water treatment is is necessary, um, especially from a surface water standpoint. Um, you know, and I I think it's great to do routine water testing. So I think in, in we to finish farms, you know, doing like once a turn uh, water testing, looking at water coliforms, water qualities, so your uh, total dissolved solids, your nitrates and sulfates. Also looking at trace minerals. Um, you know, just trying to get a general idea of what's going on in your water. And then um, your call, it's on the viral side, it's hard um, to test for that. There are some methods that we're actually validating right now, and hopefully we'll get some more research on that in the future. Um, but you know, if you have bacteria, you're probably likely to have virus because virus can actually move into um, into those sources a lot better than bacteria can. So if you're finding bacteria, you're probably going to find virus as well. So I'd start with routine water testing and then go from there and see, um, because every farm is going to be a little bit different with what your water treatment plan is going to need based on that basic water testing first. And I'd also recommend, you know, based on some of the research that we've been doing, uh, you know, the level of contamination can differ uh, from the wellhead to the water that's actually in the pig farm. So I'd recommend testing from multiple locations because in my research, we found the rooms actually have higher coliform counts and, and in some cases higher E. coli counts than in the well itself. The well was negative for E. coli or negative for coliforms, but the rooms that, um, you know, and, and that was after disinfecting like the water nipple or the end of the water line where we were collecting the water samples. So, yeah, to your point earlier, those biofilms are real um, and they are going to live in that water system. And obviously the water system communicates with each other. Um, once bacteria, viruses get in those biofilms inside the water lines, even if you've got a clean source, there could be contamination at the end of them. And we probably won't have time to get through all that on this podcast, but we'll definitely have you back on to talk more about biofilms at some point. Um, Gabby, before I let you go. Talk to us a little bit about disinfectant options or sanitation options, treatment options. What's out there? I mean, is it as simple as doing what the municipalities do and dump a bunch of chlorine in it and that fixes everything? Or is it more complicated with livestock? Yeah, so it's more complicated with livestock because we need to make sure that we have EPA approved products. And so I hear from a lot of producers sometimes it's like, oh, I'm just going to dump some bleach in there while the pigs are in the barn. And and that's a, that's not the case. We don't have, um, you know, extra label use of EPA registered products. And unfortunately, bleach doesn't have that regulation. So um, we're not able to, you know, use bleach while pigs are in the farm. But I, I like to tackle disinfection from two 
uh, sources. So there's mineral framework that builds up, um, you know, in the water lines. And so you want a disinfectant that's going to target that mineral framework because you're going to eliminate biofilms that way. And then you also want something that's going to, um, you know, cut down on the organisms as well. So, you know, um, kill those organisms. And and then also I, I'd recommend a residual disinfectant as well. So something that is, you know, a high higher concentration when pigs aren't in the barn and then um, a lower concentration concentration when pigs are, um, you know, in the barn. Um, and so chemistries are going to differ. I really like a product, uh, it's chlorine dioxide. There are EPA approved products out there that you can use. Um, but there are others, um, you know, like parasitic acid and, and some others as well that you can use and that are effective against both the mineral framework and um, the biofilms itself. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure, light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. Very good. Lots uh, more to cover there uh, than we have time for in terms of all the different options for treatment. And like I mentioned, the biofilm is a whole other area of, of water uh, quality and sanitation that deserves uh, its own podcast whenever we can get you back on here. Gabby, it's excellent information, very practical, very timely, even though we're pumping manure right now. Um, and I really appreciate you coming on and sharing that. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, thanks for being on the show. And to our audience, thank you very much for listening in uh, to the Swine Health Black Milk Podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackmilk.com and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. For Dr. Gabby Dawn, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com.